Zach Morris is trash. It's Bayside's annual homecoming against Valley. Zach hates to say anything bad about his team, but he thinks they're losers who suck. Zach continues his hallway disparagement campaign. You got anything here for your star quarterback? Life insurance. Causing Jesse to question how they're going to move these tiger tails. Zach says just attach them to hats and sell two things nobody's buying at once to make twice as much no money. A stroke of marketing genius. Meanwhile, Kelly, goddess on earth, wants to win homecoming queen. It's a lock. Screech proudly shows Zach his first zit. He named it Murray. Zach condescendingly informs Screech he takes no interest in his joy. When the teacher checks on their lab progress, Zach, who has done nothing but aimlessly attempt to use a microscope with goggles on, tells Screech to hurry up with the science crap. Screech, unassisted by Zach and under pressure of his demands, hastily prepares a volatile mixture that erupts in his face. Zach's vying for Kelly's attention and pouting like a blonde baby because he's not getting it when her homecoming competition walks through the door. Zach, mistaking the back of his shirt for a soundproof barrier, ogles them aloud, then tries to undo the damage done to his character by comparing those human beings to dog food. Next to you, they're puppy chow. Screech has bad news. Murray's gone after two hours. Zack asks if Screech did anything unusual to his face today. Screech reminds Zack of the most recent explosion caused by his carelessness. That's all Zack needs to hear to proclaim. We might have stumbled upon the invention of a century. Zack assumes instant co-ownership of a product he had no hand in making, then hatches a plan to target insecure teens globally and make a fortune selling overpriced face sauce. But Zack's rollout requires a second human guinea pig. Zack slathers up Bayside's Pimple King, Crater Face, Coburn, then tries to shirk their agreed-upon $10 payment with a counterfeit note, but generously compromises with a real 10 ripped in half. Kelly is stressed about her huge pimple. The gals promise nobody will notice. Zack sends Screech to bark at Kelly about fixing her unsightly blemish. Zack's running one of his signature staircase snake oil salesman schemes, complete with custom hat, poster, and briefcase he had time to make last night because he does no academic work. Then Zack unveils the student formerly known as Craterface, who has been jammed in a locker all morning just to get the second half of a $10 bill. Zack is open for business. All major credit cards accepted. Building interrupts Zack's latest plot to flee students on school property. Building is furious, but can't deny Craterface's results. Zack says it's a tragedy so many kids must suffer without his egregiously priced emollient. So he offers to install campus-wide vending machines to ease their pain and maybe cut the school in on those juicy profits, adding AP bribery and racketeering to his electives. Belding tells Zack it's over and he'll see him in detention. Kelly heard Zack got pinched, but inquires if he has any leftover cream to ensure her win. Zack's hoarding surplus contraband where he should be storing books. Oh, Zack, you're a lifesaver. Can I have one? I'll pay any price you ask. Zack's eyes light up at the chance to exchange his crapshoot concoction for a desperation handy and commits Kelly to a verbal contract of sextortion. Screech has bad news. That mystery goo from yesterday that they did zero testing on, then sold to everyone? It has some teeny tiny side effects. One being it's a poison that chemically burns your skin, turning it maroon, possibly forever. Who knows? Certainly not Zack. Zack scolds Screech for this predicament that is wholly a result of Zack's passion for greed and incompetence, then hides him in a tiger costume, causing Screech to miss all of his classes. So he won't alert Zack's many victims to the imminent consequences of his inadvertent chemical warfare. Kelly says the cream worked great and wants to thank Zack with a Kelly hug. Undeserving son of a bitch. Plus a movie date this weekend. Yeah, that'd be great. Any place that's dark. Words every young lady dreams to hear. Zack's planning to flee the country to escape repercussions for his whoopsie-daisy mass disfiguration when Screech reveals his face is normal again. The burn only lasts a day, but homecoming is tomorrow. Zack confesses to Kelly like a man. The zit off removes pimples, then it turns your face maroon, but it's only temporary, and a day later it goes away and you're fine. I knew you'd take it well, see ya. A man who is a coward, then berates her for putting the face cream on her face. Boy, that was stupid. Then continues to chastise her for being foolish enough to ever use his toxic lotion potion. And so what if she's slightly less hot tomorrow? She'll still be a seven to most guys, or a solid Morris 5.3. Kelly tells Zach to leave her alone forever. Clear word, Zack ignores it once to see if they're still on for that cinematic H.J. this weekend. Kelly still wins Homecoming Queen because she is a goddess, and her horrific abrasions conveniently match the school's team color. And since most of the student body was affected by the outbreak, Kelly's marred mug became the face of the people. And Zack talked the other students into painting their faces maroon under the phony pretense of school spirit to avoid further punishment, causing Bayside to finally win because Valley was distracted they were playing against disease patients, or burn victims, or best case scenario, teenagers who just love racist theatrical makeup. And and we never see Craterface ever again, because when his acne came back worse than before, he probably fucking killed himself. Let's review. Zach Morris's negligent lab behavior caused a chemical explosion that he spun into a predatory plan to get rich, literally overnight, after zero clinical trials. Then bartered his untested and banned wares for sexual favors from a girl who only felt insecure about her guaranteed victory because of his multiple comments. And when the miracle cream he peddled turned out to cause potentially irreparable skin damage, he concealed the truth, wasting valuable time that could have been 
spent trying to find a cure to devise an international escape, then turned a chance to confess into a platform to victim shame, and didn't learn anything from any of it. Zach Morris is trash. Zach Morris is trash.